Hi, we are here live at the Daughters Show of the Daughters Tour in Minneapolis. I'm here with Alexis from the band Daughters. Hello. <laughs> Hi. How has that uh, tour been so far? Uh, it's uh, been a good time. It's exhausting, but it's good. Truly, truly. I know that you just got in from Denver. Are you planning on doing anything fun while you're in Minneapolis at all? Uh, I have a friend here. I, just, I really want to get a milkshake. But everyone's kind of giving me a hard time because it's cold. But there's got to be a milkshake place somewhere. I have to be able to get a milkshake, right? I think you can definitely get a milkshake. I feel like if there's any place where you want to eat ice cream while it's cold, it's Minnesota. I think it's actually pretty normal. Right. Yeah, that, that makes sense. I'm in the right place. Yeah, so you just put out your first record in eight years, you and the whole band, of course. Um, and you had a hiatus between that. So how was that process of writing the first record like, or your, not first record, your latest record like? Uh, it's difficult. You know, we all live in different places. Uh, I live in Pennsylvania. John is our drummer. He lives in uh, Texas. Nick and Sam are still in Providence. So getting together is the problem. I, I don't, there was no uh, shortage of ideas. Or, um, you know, uh, it was just hard to rehearse. And, and to uh, we had a lot of uh, email threads and text threads and all these things. Uh, we had everything stored in a Dropbox so everyone could access, uh, you know, what Nick was working on. And, and um, we were constantly communicating about what we were writing. But it, it was, you know, there were discouraging moments where you don't see anybody for two months because uh, we're not hanging out, obviously. We're living in far away. So it, it, it wasn't easy to kind of keep morale going, and it was easy to get distracted. But uh, but we, I think we did pretty well, all things considered. And the record came out really, it's a good record. So I agree. It is very good. You said that. <laughs> um, there was no kind of short and ideas you were able to kind of get back into it and keep creating things with these dudes pretty easily yeah 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 there's um i mean we had i mean we've got hundreds of songs in the dropbox there's plenty of stuff we didn't use and we were you know we had a couple sessions that we scrapped that were you know recording sessions and writing sessions that we thought we were going to rush ourselves into doing something doing an ep and it didn't go as well as we had hoped so we uh, shelved the, these things and then kind of tore some of the songs apart. And a couple of them were used, I think, um, from the earlier sessions, like Less Sex and uh, maybe like Long Road were part of an early session that we had done maybe a couple years ago. And we kind of revisited them and we worked them. Cool. And you said that it was written over a long period of time. Did you record it over those long periods of times too when you would get... Or together, or would you, or did you record it um, just kind of quickly during a extended session? Well, Nick did a lot of it on a uh, Garage Band in his apartment. He has uh, a lot of bullshit gear. Can I swear? Is that all right? <laughs> he has a lot of things in his uh, apartment that made it easy for him to to uh, to work. And so, yeah, I mean, it, it was a strange process. It's one we've never uh, attempted before. You know, normally we rehearse, you know, four or five days a week and then write the record and then go record it. So this was, um, again, because of uh, distance, this was, you know, the best we could do. So uh, to uh, have have um, the ability to just compile a lot of a lot of music and um, and then everyone have access to it made it easier. I, I, but I think at times maybe we kind of got in our own way and we, it allowed us to kind of drag our feet here and there and, and not uh, focus when we should. Um, but as I said, ultimately, we did, we did a good job, I think. So. Totally. So it sounds like you took a pretty DIY approach to it still. Yeah, uh, it, uh, maybe like a modern DIY. It certainly wasn't like um, all of us, you know, sleeping in like the same house and then just like re recording and writing in the basement. This, this was, you know, um, we were aided by technology and it made being further apart easier to to communicate it was easy to communicate thankfully with the wonders of technology to uh work on the record without being in the same place totally and it's probably something that wasn't as e easy to do back in 2010 when your last album came out your self-titled record which was 
much more I feel like in your face and just very loud and very fast and this one had those aspects too but I feel like there was kind of a lot more space involved in it and you had the same sorts of tones but I felt like it was kind of dialed back a little bit in a nice way. Um, was there any sort of thing in your writing process that decided or that made you decide to change your sound in that way? Yeah, there's like a constant evolution in this band that I think um, is jarring when when kind of looked from one record to the next but I, I think that if people are a little more uh, conscious of our catalog they'll see that the progression is very natural um, yeah I, I think that it's um, you know Nick was working a lot with uh, you know yeah, space and um, he was doing a lot of film scoring and uh, think that was starting to reflect in the work he was doing with us so there is definitely a lot more uh, anxiety I think like a like sonically <coughs> to create a record that is more um, kind of less about just writing some rock songs and more kind of like creating uh, an aesthetic or um, like a dreamscape in the sound or something like that. I, I, yeah, I think there, there's definitely something cinematic about the record that we've never had before. Totally, and I like that you brought up the aesthetic of your record too because while I feel like the visual aesthetic that you have in your branding, your artwork, and your video um, really matches this soundscape that you have in it, and I know that for your cover art specifically, you worked with an artist who is either from Minneapolis or lives in Minneapolis, but I was wondering how you got acquainted with that artwork and that artist yeah Jesse is um, he lives in LA now he's from uh, he's from the Midwest I'm pretty sure I think he's from like uh, Wyoming or something like that um, I'm, I'm wrong it's not Wyoming but it's something uh, <laughs> equally as uh, strange um, uh, our friend Casey uh, is a he runs a gallery in LA and uh, he works with Jesse and he told us that uh, Jesse liked our band, and, and uh, I think that we, were, we weren't really sure what we were going to do artwork. Nick and I were, were talking about a lot of things, and um, I think I wanted something much more like photographic. And then when Casey suggested working with Jesse, he had uh, given us maybe it was like half a dozen of those diff different uh, faces. And we were trying, we really wanted to use all of them, but uh, we decided on you know, what, what became the cover which uh, I was talking to, to Jesse in LA and he said it was when he, he didn't even really like it that much. It kind of seemed like he had, you know, he wasn't, uh, it wasn't one of his favorites of the group. And we had some, uh, of course that's the one we picked for him. So I feel like that's always how it works when two artists like work with each other. One always likes the thing that the other artist created that is their least favorite. I don't know what it is. Um, but would you say that his art and that album cover kind of um, influenced how you branded the rest of the album visually? Uh, I don't know. Maybe it was sort of um, by chance. Uh, because uh, our person, uh, Jeremy, who directed the Less Sex video, had, hadn't seen the cover. Um, he had all these ideas for it um, when it was still in kind of... Um, had been mastered or, or properly mixed yet and when Jeremy heard the record uh, Jeremy was the original guitar player when we started the band um, however many years ago what was that 50 years ago or whatever it was um, it's not 50 we're not that old so uh, um, he had his own idea I think I think that the, the, the record just sort of lent itself to, to particular types of artists and, and people who were interested in working and, and um, you know I can't imagine Jesse would have handed us something and I think Casey would have had the foresight to not uh, match us with somebody who was doing uh, like some sort of like uh, illustration of, of like uh, fluffy bears or something this wouldn't have made sense so you know people were, were being drawn to the, the record and the sounds in the record uh, was just reaching the appropriate um, other artistic voices or, or people such as Jeremy and Jesse. So. Awesome. Sounds good. It's interesting how like-minded people come together like that. Um, I know that this record kind of gained a lot of traction. It was on a lot of best new or best music year-end lists and all of that stuff. Um, did you kind of see an increase of like press from this record that you had seen from your last records? 
Yeah, I get asked a lot, and I kind of give the same answer every time. It's like we've always just been a fringe band, and uh, we never expect anyone to pay attention. We always just kind of ex- figure we'll put out a record or we'll do a tour, and some, some people pay attention and most won't. So uh, it's definitely a, a, a vastly different experience now than it's ever been. And, you know, it's interesting to, you know, be, uh, you know, all of us uh, just at the doorstep of 40 years old and into, into uh, be treated like we're a new band. Um, I think it's great, you know, if, uh, and, you know, if people are, who are getting into us are younger and, you know, that's helpful. We can't continue to play to, you know, people are our age. A lot of them don't want to go out anymore. So <laughs> thankfully people are younger and, and uh voraciously uh consuming what what it is we're doing here and and um it's great I, i'm i'm pleased and and you know to get praise from publications and such is fine uh it helps but you know ultimately that doesn't mean anything they're, they're all they, they come and go and uh, there's a there are 20 reviews every every day and, and um people get praised for all kinds of bullshit they do and it doesn't really amount to much so yeah I know um, kind of hanging around the local music scene here in Minneapolis, there's been a lot of noise rock bands coming about, and I know that a lot of them really look up to Daughters. Is there any advice that you would give to aspiring noise rock bands out there? (laughs) Are we a noise rock band? I don't know what we are. Uh, I feel like a lot of bands say that, and I don't really know how to talk about genres that much either, so it's hard. I don't don't think anyone needs advice. if anyone's playing music and they, rec- they, they they need advice as to why they should continue to do it, then they shouldn't continue to do it. Mm-hmm. They're just wasting their own time mm-hmm. and everyone else's. Um, do it. Do it if you want to do it, and if if you're not having fun, don't 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 waste your time. Don't waste everybody's time. There's a lot of bullshit out there, and it's we're like flooded with bad music and terrible ideas and like m- m- lukewarm art. And I think that it, everybody needs to get out of the way because um, that's not like a fad. To, it's it's just like you if you're if you're you know, you're selling soft T-shirts. You know, don't, who gives a fuck? Get it, get it out of here. You can get that that shit. Give me branded all over. True, very true. <laughs> no, I love that. Um, are there any sort of last things that you want to talk about as we wrap up? Any other things you'd like to plug? I'd like to plug Hyde. I think they're an amazing band. Uh, it's been really great to have them with us these past few weeks. Uh, I think we just had this show in, in Chicago, and then they're they're uh, not with us for the remainder, and it's very sad. And Seth and Heather are really talented and doing something really great, and uh, everyone should listen to Hyde. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for taking the time to talk with me today. Yeah, I don't uh, have anything else to do. <laughs> yeah, I'm yeah. Just sitting downstairs. Turing is a lot <laughs> of sitting around for sure. Yeah. All right. Well, thank you so much. That is just, or that was just Alexis from Daughters here at the Daughters Show for Radio K. I'm Sylvia Jennings.